Hey, um, I'm Kaiser, and I'm here with 20XX Magazine. We thank you for having us today. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> we just want to know a couple things about photography, your interests, and like what your process yeah. is like. Uh, so yeah, the first thing we really want to know is how did you get into photography and kind of what significance does photography as an art form hold to you? So when I was younger, my mom, she would always have her own personal camera. She would just let me use it whenever I have family events. So, you know, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just clicking the shutter and I was just having, I was just having fun with it. And then she and my mom and my dad eventually ended up getting me a camera for my birthday. I think it may have been when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Yeah, I think it was in one of those years. And then um, I was using it for like a little bit and then it kind of just faded away. And then junior year came and I really needed to figure out what I wanted to do in my life. So I said, you know, let me just try photography again. So, you know, um, I just started doing it. I was enjoying it. And then I'm in my senior year of college. Wow, so, yeah. Um, are you studying like film or yeah. photography in college? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, I go to school visual arts for photography and video. Awesome. Cool. Do you prefer digital photography or film, and why? Um, definitely film. Uh, there's just something that you get from film that that digital will never be able to achieve, in my opinion. Uh, film it has a lot more feeling to it, a lot more depth and. Yeah, there's just, there's just something about it that, like, you know, I don't know. Like, I'll shoot digital if I have to, but usually I'm always with the film camera, always. What kind of camera do you use when you are using it? Um, last semester, I was using mainly an, uh, an Olympus XA2. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it's, a, it's a range finder. And nowadays, I shoot with a Canon K2. Awesome, cool. So, um... When checking out some of your work online, your portrait shots feature uh, a lot of people wearing shoe brands like Supreme and Vape, um, all the way to things like high fashion names, uh, for example, Rap Simmons. Um, what place does fashion have in your work, if any? So I wouldn't particularly call myself a fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, that's honestly the route I thought I was going in until you know last semester i definitely had a, a whole 180 um with what i with what i with what i thought i wanted to do with photography so throughout all of last year it was kind of just developing somewhat of the aesthetic that i have now um i feel as if i i am a huge fan of fashion you know i definitely keep up with all the trends but um i think with fashion it's mostly because i just hang around fashionable people and that kind of just comes through to my images. Cool. What would you say is your main aesthetic now? Like, what do you like taking pictures of and what do you like to capture? Because uh, you said that, you know, it's yeah. different from what you originally started with. So nowadays, um, I think that, I think that, you know, a lot of things are truly about aesthetic. Um, I think that I, I do have my own aesthetic car carved out for me. Um, I think I have a, a clean aesthetic um i really do not like people in my images like you know if i was to take a picture of like a sign or something or like of, of a car i don't want anybody in the background because i feel as if that kind of just messes up the meaning of the picture and just like the picture overall you know it just leads the eye to somewhere where it doesn't have to go um i think that's actually a really good segue into my next question um, which is mainly about uh, your book that you published, uh, Trials 2. Um, and in it, uh, I noticed that you focus on a lot of kind of landmark shots, um, you know, less people and all that. Like, what was the kind of inspiration or thought process for uh, the book itself? Um, why did you choose, like, the shots that you mm -hmm. put in there for that one specifically? So I know, like, with what I want to do with photography, um, I definitely do want to be in galleries. I want to have my own books, have my own zines as an example. And I'm definitely influenced by by a photographer named Ari Markopoulos. And he's really into like the whole zine culture. You know, he's always putting out zines. Um, a lot of his stuff is at um, Dashwood Books. And I, and I go over there from time to time. 
But what made me put this out is that I've just always wanted to put out a zine. And usually when I would first think of it throughout throughout the months, you know, I would say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. But then, you know, I would never, like, just push myself to just do it. Mm -hmm. So over the summer, um, I think it was, like, in August, um, um, I was talking to my girlfriend and... And, you know, she she kind of just pushed me to do it. I'm like, you know what? There's absolutely no reason for me to not be able to do it right now. I have all this time. Let me just do it. So, and also another thing like that, I would just make excuses for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I would say, I don't I, I don't have a photo printer. I, I can't print out my images. But um, I'm like, nah. I could just go down to the basement, print out everything, even though everything is in black and white. Mm-hmm. But I still know what my pictures look like. So I printed out like 100 images. And I just I just laid them out all on my bed. And I just started sequencing them. And by the end of the night, I had a, fi- I had a final product that I was satisfied with. So I'm like, wow, I mean, if I just push myself to just do something, it can be, it, it can be done by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So um, by then, you know, I was, I was done. And I wanted to put it into production once I went in, once I moved in back into my dorm. So once I moved back in, like a few days later, um, I had it printed. I got the first copy. I showed like two or two or three people. I liked it. They liked it. And then I just put it into production and it just let it sell. So awesome. Um, what would you say is like your favorite shot? Uh, out of the entire collection or um, favorite least favorite i think that one of my favorites is uh, i think it'll have to be these two all these 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 two and what's in what's interesting about this is that like some of these shots they were generally taken all in the same area but okay. What I like about it, like that, it doesn't even come off that way. So like probably like five or six of these Im- images, like they, they they were all taken in like in, in like a mile radius. But um yeah, so I definitely do like these though. There's just something about like this close up shot, you know. Um, I really like the full the full thing, but just having it cropped in, I'm like I kind of like this omnicity about it, and. The way like the green pops out in the in the white, I really I really like it, and the technology on this one too. It's old busted TV. Yeah, I like these. Awesome, cool. What would you say is your main kind of inspiration, or who would you kind of point that to? I know you mentioned a photographer before, but are there yeah. any other kind of um, maybe art movements, um, artists, or just things you see like mm. in the world around you that kind of inspire you? I to make your work. I think that what's really inspiring me nowadays is more of like the three D realm. I've really been trying to like teach myself more about it because I know like that you know three D is the future. Mm. The future is motion. You know, it's not only gonna be about still still photographs. So um, I think that that's definitely pushing me. There is this show that's up at um. Tanya Banakdar Gallery. It's with them Sarah Z. And really what it is, it's like she took she took over the whole the whole gallery. It's, it's this huge space. And what I can compare it to is like the scene in Inception where Leonardo DiCaprio he like washes up on the on the beach and like you're pretty much like just walking through his consciousness. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what she's that's basically what she's doing, but just in like her art form. And she even brought her workspace into there, and she, she, she called everything art. And that's kind of what I was do. Like, I like to think, like, everything I do is somewhat art, but, you know, when you aren't established or anything, it's like, uh, I don't want to keep this, I don't want to keep that, let me just throw it out, you know? I'm never going to do anything with it. So, um, that definitely was really inspirational, seeing, seeing how somebody took over a whole gallery space and made everything art and it was really it was really dope um but yeah definitely the contemporary art movement yeah definitely people 
people are definitely doing their thing nowadays. Mm. Um, you kind of mentioned uh, a bit talking about being an established artist versus maybe not being an established artist. Do you see that as a realm you would like to go down? Um, and if not, uh, how do you feel comfortable like with mm. the spot you're in, the place you're in, yeah. and where you might be going in the future? Um, I definitely do want to be in galleries. Um, I do take my work really seriously. Um, there's a there's a certain way I want everything to be displayed. Everything everything has intent to it. So like there's a reason why I kind of just don't post my my own pictures on Instagram. Mostly because like I don't want it to live there. Like I, I see photographers who just like post all their pictures on their Instagram and kind of let it live there, and then that's basically the ex that's basically the extent of it. And it's like, why just only have it on an app, you know? Why not, you know, put everything out there? Um, what I would do some, I think, yeah, in, in September, I would go around repasting my work. Um, I did a little promo run for, for this, and I was repasting, like, like, some promo images around. And I had some pictures from last semester that I printed on, the, on a specific type of paper, and I was just repasting those around. I don't know. I don't know who sees it. I don't. I don't know what's even gonna happen to it. But you know, just knowing that, like, at least I'm just contributing to something in the physical realm is definitely satisfying for me. Um, yeah. So I mean, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with posting your stuff on Instagram. I mean, you can honestly do what you want. But personally, for for me, I don't. I, I don't like my work living there. I used. I used to post that every everything up on there, but. Um, I kind of just took everything down because I was kind of just, just got tired of looking at it. Mm -hmm. So I just post pictures that I just take on my phone. Awesome. Um, one thing that kind of struck me uh, that I was super curious about when I was looking at the zine is you're on the cover you used an image of like the American flag, but it's upside down. Did you take that image? Um, I guess post process it at all? Or like, why did you choose to put that on the cover? Um. I decided to put this on the cover because, well, there isn't any post-processing to it except just me rotating it. That's about the extent of it. But I just put this on the cover because I think that it just evokes a certain feeling mm -hmm. that we're all feeling nowadays, you know, um, and even just the image by itself is just a striking image, you know, um, it kind of just makes you, kind of just makes you think about the times that we're living in and it could be a good representation of the time that we're living in too you know we aren't all you know completely unified one nation under god completely nowadays so um i wasn't really thinking about it from that point of view i kind of just thought you know this will be a great solid cover for my first scene but um hey i mean everything is open to interpretation for the people at home you know don't stop stay consistent stay motivated stay creative i have this um this quote up on my wall uh that my teacher gave to me um it's from chuck close and basically what he's saying is that you know you're not gonna get inspired just by you know sitting like just just by sitting around taking a shower the only way you're gonna get inspired is if is if you keep on doing it so in my example I'm only gonna get inspired if I keep on taking images and then that's and that's when the big idea is gonna come. And let's say if you do graphic design, you gotta keep on designing so if you do music, just keep on making songs and that's and then that's when that big idea is gonna come and hopefully your career starts and you'll make it. Awesome. Well thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um thank you for giving us such an kinda inspirational piece. Right there at the end. Is there anything you want to plug, like social media, YouTube channel, um, like that? I have a yeah, web. I, I have a website, um, Kaiser.xyz. Just change my Instagram to Kaiser.xyz, so everything is the same. And you know, just support. So like, all I can ask for. Awesome. And if you like the art, enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you. That's a straight up copy of the ending of every Hot Ones episode. <laughs> <laughs> this camera. This camera. This camera. <laughs>